Hi guys, I just wanted to um, make a video today before this um, before this Browns Giants game because I know a lot of people have you know been curious about like why I think Davis Webb is going to be such a sensational and talented player, and I've been following Davis Webb you know since his collegiate days at Texas Tech when he had two successful seasons, Holiday Bowl MVP. And then he got injured and Pat Mahomes beat him out. And these are just some of the interviews that, you know, while I was watching Davis Webb at college, these are just some of the interviews that Webb gave to local, um, you know, news stations that were covering Texas Tech. So this is via Texas Tech Athletics, the first interview. And then the second video, one is Mercury News and the other is the Cal Football you know, Athletic Department. So I didn't want to take credit for any of these videos. I would like to interview Davis someday, obviously here for you guys on Rover Sports. But you know, it's pretty cool to go back and look at how special and, and, and distinct and unique Davis Webb is as a young kid. So this is just Davis Webb as a 20-year-old kid. And these are some of the reasons why I think Davis Webb could be a very special transcendent player because of his work ethic and because of some of his interviews and uh, th these are just some great footage I believe and I give credit to these news agencies and Davis Webb so I wanted to go ahead and show you guys some right now um, and I hope you guys uh, enjoy it all right year three for you uh, com coming off of a year where you had to battle adversity battle injuries battle playing time what, uh, my, as far as your mindset, what, what things have changed going from year two to year three for you? I'm just motivated more, you know, just, and I've always been motivated. That's a bad word to use. It's just, I'm most, I'm relentlessly competitive to win this job. And I want the, to be the best player on the field at the time. And I feel like this team in 2015 can be a team that leaves a legacy like they did in 08. I really believe that. I feel like enough guys at every spot, they can do a good job this year, and I feel like I could be the quarterback to lead them. So you know, maturing more from you know, 2014 to 2015 is one word I'll use a lot. And you know, I just want to be consistently good because if you're consistently good, you're great. And that's the one thing I want to do this year. Is this the most hungry you've ever been in your whole football career? My whole life, in 20 years of life. Um, you know, I've always had people doubt me ever since I was a seventh grade B team back at quarterback. And my middle school coach told me I probably couldn't play in high school. I probably should stick at hockey. And I was a good hockey player, and and I was like, you know, and then my high school coach and my dad looked at me and said, hey, listen, you're going to be 6'4", 6'3", 6'5", and you're, you're going to have a chance to play Division One football. Just don't listen to him. And the high school coach motivated me. My, everybody's motivated me. So I just kept going, kept going. And every goal I've really ever, like, reached or set, I've reached. There's not been one goal I haven't failed. And so I felt the same way. This competition, I feel like there's a goal set, and I feel like there's a process of going to that goal, and I feel like – the end result might vary, but the process of me getting there hasn't, and I feel like that process is going to be worth it. Do you think that being involved in this type of competition has made you a better quarterback and a better person? Oh, there's no doubt. I mean, me and Pat are really good friends to begin with, but and we worked out 745 every morning this summer. And if I'm lifting weights, I'm doing bench press, I look at his rack, and I'm like, okay, he has this weight on, blah, blah, blah. Or if I'm running sprints, I'm running, I look to my right while he's looking to his left. It's just that kind of competition because we both want to play, but we both understand that the guy who's going to play is going to give the, the, this team the best chance to win. And I feel like both both of us have a pretty good mindset going in. We know we're two quarterbacks that can help, win this, help this team win, and I feel like together we have made each other better, not just us, but everybody around us. Physically, what are some of the things that you've done in the off season to be able to help yourself be healthier for the 2015 season? Yeah, you know, I, I had a fractured ankle and torn labrum last year. So after December 2nd, I had my surgery. My goal was to get to the best shape I ever have been. So now I can bench 335 pounds and squat 525 pounds, which is I'm very proud of. I weigh 230 pounds. I'm the strongest, the fastest I've ever been. I mean, I feel better than I ever have. And that's the credit to Coach Dennis and the strength staff and Dana and the nutritionists to the, to the training staff. I mean, I've put myself in a physical position to win this job. And mentally, I've worked all offseason for it. So why not now? Why not do it now? Just stop talking about it and go do it. Is there any question? I mean, you sound like a man possessed right now. You're on a mission. You're not going not gonna to fail. Can you project now a couple years down the road that this is going to be kind of a competition that you're thankful for because it kind of took you from maybe when you said you weren't as motivated or weren't quite as aware to where you are now? Is this something that you're going to be thankful for, you think, in a couple years for kind of lighting that fire? It's a process. You know, if you look at Tom Brady, the greatest quarterback to ever play this game, 
every year in Michigan, he went through this. Tony Romo, Division Two, Eastern Illinois quarterback, undrafted. It's a process of getting better. It's all about just getting better and just working hard and outworking everybody. Because people who do that are successful in anything they do. You know, success isn't happen isn't luck. You know, it's happened for a reason. And I feel like this competition is the best thing that could possibly ever happen to me. And I'm taking it that way, and I'm learning from it. And I'm this past season was not fun for anybody, especially me. And I feel like this 2015 season can just just erase everything. I mean, I've learned from it. I've I've gained more experience. I'm more mature. I'm I'm very excited. And as you said, I mean, if you think I'm motivated right now, you should have saw me from December 2nd to summer workouts because this is nothing. You know, you wait till Thursday when we start fall camp because it's going to be crazy. In your summer workouts, which wide receivers improved the most? The first order of business, of course, here in Berkeley this spring, replacing Jared Goff, one of this program's all-time greats. Great day to be a bear. Yes, sir. where every season I always pick out a day where I was going to sit down, have some alone time for a couple hours and really think about what I want to accomplish this season. And For instance, this is my senior year, so I want to play this game for as long as I can. So my goal was to be the first quarterback taken in the NFL draft next year. And that's something that's out of my control, but it's a good goal to have. And to reach that, you get to play successful on Saturdays. the state of Texas and I'm pretty familiar with all the high school coaches around there and you know it's something that we can relate on. There's some movement. Shot towards the end zone. Touchdown. Davis Webb making a pay. Can you get a hit? Oh that's great. So Davis Webb is in. Webb has 44 career touchdown passes. That's seventh all time at Texas Tech. Started 14 games eight last year. I knew in the back of my mind and in my heart that I want to be the quarterback for Texas Tech. Tommy Terrorville was the staff that I committed to originally, and he left for Cincinnati. I really couldn't commit to Texas Tech if they didn't have a head football coach, so I opened my recruitment up, and I really liked TCU. I liked what Coach Patterson was installing there at TCU, going into the new Big 12, but then Coach Kingsbury got hired, and he told me about what he thought he could happen over the next three or four years at Texas Tech and how I could be a you know, a big instrument into that um, process, and I, I fell in love with it and went on with Texas Tech over TCU. Webb's got room to run. Can he get to the first down marker? There's a flag down in the backfield as Webb got enough for the first down, it appears. He's coming to the sidelines, it looks like. Yeah, left shoulder, he's, stick, he's sticking out. This is not good. Uh, this, is, this is quite a problem for Texas oh, Tech. You've got to remember what the quarterback situation is at Texas Tech now. This offseason, they had three guys transfer. Remember, Michael Brewer goes to Virginia Tech. Yep. Baker Mayfield goes to Oklahoma. And Clayton Nicholas went to Bowling Green. So that leaves true freshman Patrick Mahomes. We had four quarterbacks transfer out now since my freshman year, which is just unbelievable. College balls in your game. That's why you got to make sure you do all this because you don't want to be that guy. And I worked extremely hard to be started as a true freshman. And then the bowl game, I got, I had, I had the pleasure of getting MVP. In my sophomore year, I, I still think I worked just as hard. I just, I felt like, you know, my mindset changed a little bit. Just saying that, you know, I thought this is, nothing would happen. You know, this is my team was going to ride off in the sunset, break every one of Graham Harrell's records, and maybe got a little too complacent. But I, I still don't think I got that complacent. I just think I battled a lot of injuries and went through a lot of adversity and led to me being a backup last year in Tech. So. I don't want that to ever happen again. So that's why I come here every day. It's seven's the latest, and I don't leave here until 10 or 11 p.m. every night, just so I know I'm prepared to play my best each and every Saturday so my teammates can enjoy success with me because I plan on having a pretty good year and you know, hopefully set myself up for the rest of my football career with that. And tomorrow ends in 10 years. I want to make sure I have no regrets and I got the most out of it.
because I know I can throw a better than anybody. This is the first time we've ever had a graduate transfer quarterback. Um, and so, you know, the process was going to be something that was a little bit unknown uh, for us as coaches. It's, it's not something that, that we had experienced before. You know, the conversations we had with Davis once he decided to come was that, okay, look, you know, come in here, uh, earn the respect of your teammates. And, and as I said, he already had a plan. I haven't seen it happen that quickly, you know, they're especially coming all the way across the country, coming to the West Coast. Really the first time he's ever visited the area was when he came out here on his visit. And, you know, just to come in here, uh, he's, he's very driven about uh, where he wants to go and, and he knows that it's all football with him. So uh, he knew that he had to speed up the process and uh, I think things happened pretty quickly for him. He was just you know, pretty far ahead of, of, you know, what it took to run the offense. Um, it's a little bit different maybe than it has been in the past. There's a little bit more on the quarterback in terms of, you know, communicating with the other players. And that's something that he was accustomed to doing and comfortable doing. And, and I think that gave him a little bit of a head start. When he first got here in May, um, he texted me right away, come, you know, let's go throw, let's go do something, let's go out on the field, uh, run routes, that kind of thing, to get the connection, the, the quarterback-receiver connection. So. Uh, yeah, that's sort of that's sort of what he does. He's incredibly prepared. Um, you know, he's very meticulous in what he does and his approach to things. And um, and, and so, you know, he, he's a lot like Jared. Jared was that way. I mean, he was, you know, everything had a plan. He had a plan for you know how he wanted to go about doing things. And 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 Davis is really the same way. And I think that's what makes those guys special. This is a decent look right here, where the corner goes with the outside receiver. He condenses it down. Now you got. Vic down here on his out route, on his option route. On option, I'm gonna tell him to expand a little bit more. He's got all that all that grass to work with. On the X, outside levers, press him up, going man with it. It's a study abroad for me. You know, I'm here for six months to win as many football games as I can and represent this university the best of my ability while getting a 4.0, hopefully in public health. But at the same time, this is an unbelievable experience and I'm taking it all in and embracing it. I always want to prove myself. I want to prove I'm the best quarterback for this team. You know, not only this team, but the best quarterback in the Pac-12. That's my goal and that's what I strive for. But, you know, I don't talk about that much because I can't control that. I can just control being the best quarterback I can be. And uh, I want to earn it every single day. You know, I want somebody to push me, can compete with me. Even though I am named the starting quarterback, I don't look at it that way. I look at it as a guy behind me who wants that starting job, just like I did last year, who's, you know, knocking on my door and any time it could open up. I walk by here, I try to picture this place packed. 